Hi, and welcome to the Father Daughter Experience. It's Wednesday. It is Wednesday, and we're going to have some fun today. We're going to talk about um, man Botox and cosmetic improvements. Oh. Um, what was the what was the catalyst? The catalyst uh, um, of all places and of all people was um, one of the people that we follow on TikTok, our good friend uh, Joe Jonas. Joe Jonas, <laughs> my homie for real. Joe Jonas, um, husband of a tall queen, Sophie Turner. Love them both. My so much. mom. Um, so um, your mother actually shared something with me that kind of kicked off this conversation, which was that um, Joe Jonas is now a brand ambassador for. Uh, a product called Zeomen. Um, what is that? Zeomen is, from from what I understand, essentially an alternative to um, a botulism injection, um, or more popularly known as Botox. Um, so it's, I guess, the focus and the tar- and the, the idea is that it targets and freezes uh, the lines on your forehead. Oh, I need that. Um, I need it. I have a couple of fairly deep grooves here. Um, And (laughs) I I guess I'm jumping the shark when I say I need it. Um, But essentially, he's come out and said, like, look, men should be open and honest about using these types of products Mm -hmm. and getting work done. Sure. Um, He is saying this at 33 years old. Yeah. um, Where he's basically saying, like, one, uh, obviously, he's fine getting this work done and and having the injections and doing whatever it is. but also, you know, he's probably being compensated pretty well for it. Sure. He is 10 years younger than I am. Can't, can't shame the hustle, you know? No. Uh, and, and he's pointing out something that I think is not a surprise to any of us, and that is that um, men are aging and that there is a stigma around this type of thing. Now, um, I don't necessarily feel that there's a, a, a stigma around it for me personally, but I do think that if you ask the average man, hey, are you cool with with getting Botox or how often do you go and see your esthetician and get a facial? Mm-hmm. I don't know how often those those conversations come up. Um, how, 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 about, how about your with your friends? You have you have friends that are probably firmly about eight to 10 years older than you. So around the age of Joe Jonas, maybe a little bit younger. What would what would your friends say? I know a couple of my friends who get cosmetic procedures um so i feel i think it's kind of just a an accepted part of of getting older you think it's a generational change yeah i mean i i've just always seen it you know for me i guess this isn't the question you're asking so i'll kind of step off what i was about to say but i think for me seeing it around so much i just kind of am like oh some people get it very dramatically and some people get it very minutely just to kind of be like, oh, I, I want to negate this line or I want to minimize this. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And honestly, I barely notice it, like which I think is is the, idea. the point uh, for most people. It's just to preserve the way that you look in a moment in time for a little longer so that's just how I, how I've always thought of it. Obviously, there's more extreme procedures you can get, but most of my friends that I know who get it do very like minute kind of things. When you just when you the way you just said, um, just preserving a moment in time, I'm just imagining somebody like being like just vacuum sealed, just like preserved, like in a museum. Yeah, it's Paul Rudd. <laughs> well. Yeah, Paul Rudd is is Paul, you know what we could get off on a, a quick tangent is Paul Rudd the new Keanu Reeves where everybody says Keanu Reeves just does not age and he's essentially no, Keanu a vampire. Keanu Reeves is still Keanu Reeves and Paul Rudd is Paul Rudd. They're their own brands because Keanu Reeves is like vampire brand of not aging and Paul Rudd is like I've been the same guy from Clueless. Yeah, yeah, exactly. My entire yeah, career, like copy paste. I'm just like a little. I've like aged like a delicious wine. That's Paul Rudd. There you go. Yeah, probably getting some good work. He does. I, so this, this, what was interesting about this conversation when your mother brought it to us was the fact that um, I, I think it's really interesting because I don't, I think it's funny that Joe Jonas brings this up and says there's a stigma around people uh, or men having these treatments done. And I think it's, it's one of those things where I don't know how often people are aware of the fact that these things are actually marketed towards men because 
when your mother and I were in college, we took a women's studies class together. We were both in the same class. I was like, Very I think cool. I think I was one of two men in the class or I was the only man in the class. I don't quite remember. That hasn't changed much because when I went to college and took a women in gender studies class, there were two men and they were the worst men I've ever met in my whole life. Well, I, I'm not a wor- I'm not a terrible man. Um, I obviously, lo- true. I obviously am a, I'm a, I'm a feminist. I'm a proponent of, of women and your mother and I were in the class. And one of the things that came up was around the way that like, well, women are targeted in a way that men aren't like with health and beauty mm-hmm. and all of these things. I don't, yeah, I don't agree with that. Well, what I brought up in the class at the time, and I think this leans into, you know, now 20 years later, whatever it is, is the fact that most of the women in class, so if you say there's 25 people in class and 23 of them are women, the the majority of those women are not watching or listening to the same shows or radio programs that I was listening to at the time. Sure. So let's just go with sports radio mm-hmm. and, and ESPN. If we just pick those two things, like local sports radio and ESPN, every ad that you hear mm-hmm. are for some form of male enhancement. Yep. So it's 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 kind of testosterone pills. Yep. Or it's Viagra. Right. The other ones are about losing your hair. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of them are fat burners. Sure. So you probably have a little bit of gut. You got to lose that gut, and then your then your wife will love you a little bit more, fatty. Right. Um. <laughs> but and it's essentially how they do Wolf. it because well they're not as I, I think women get bullied in in their advertisements but uh, it's like it's like ex- it's women bullying women in women's ads and it's men like being like fuck you bro in their ads i was gonna say yeah. it's, it's a softer it's totally, bullying it's, yes. for women it's a softer bullying like you for would women, look so much better for if women you just it's malicious it's like the underhanded of like oh, could you imagine how much Susan would be jealous if you didn't have your fine lines, if you didn't have your parentheses anymore? Right. And and the rest of the time, and, and the men's advertisements are essentially like, hey, you're not satisfying your wife because you're fat and you're lazy and you're losing your hair. And you know what? Your kids don't respect you either because yeah. you're probably too busy golfing with your buddies and going for beers and not hanging out with your kids and reading them stories and tucking them into bed. Boy, are you a piece of shit. Damn. And what was really funny is I will I will give all of the credit in the world to our instructor because the woman in the class said, you know what? This is a women's studies class, but everyone's assignment for the next class. And we had like an online message board where you had to like post comments and then sure. respond to people yep. like the whole online class set, set up. And she added in like a new thing and said, for next week, you need to watch, I think it was like an hour. You were supposed to listen to an hour of sports talk radio um, straight and make notes on it or listen to ESPN. Watch sure. ESPN. And you were like, done. And take note. Well, for me, it was a gimme. <laughs> I didn't have to do any of it because I already knew it. But yeah. for everybody else, it was kind of this like, let's have a learning experience around these things. And I think it surprised, yeah. I think it surprised people because it's just you're not hearing that. Well, ever. It would be if I watched TLC. And you do, so I don't know why you said it like but, that. But um, not. But we watch. But not with ads. Well, correct. But back in the day, you watched it too. Like when I was growing up, I'm sure you remember. Like when we would watch like What Not to Wear and stuff like that. I think a lot of it is still in there. But for women, it's like slim fast and diet programs and Shapewear. workout and here's this like six, 60 days to shredded abs for any woman kind of things. Um, but no, I think you bring up an interesting point that something I've talked about briefly with some of my guy friends, uh, kind of in line with it. It's not just that men don't really get, you know, we don't talk about how men are kind of targeted in these same ways with like beauty standards and aesthetics and, and, and expectations. But we also don't really talk about like men's mental health with that either. Like that's just something that I was thinking about while you said that. We because men are expected so much to be providers and strong and unmoving kind of pillars as much as, you know, I think men, much like every other type of person on the planet, are um, vulnerable, easily hurt or or affected or emotional people. And and I just feel like, you know, we again, it's even in the difference of ads, though, because it's like, well, your feelings are hurt. 
pussy by this terrible by this ad no you know what I, you're laughing but I think that that's how I feel when I see things targeted at men even workout ads or or these like men I see on YouTube where it's like you can't you can't pick up women at the bar you should listen to me Chaz pro bono guy who's gonna take you uh, to the bar and I'm gonna tell teach you, to you do all this. of the secrets yeah but it's again it's just like know. breeding this insecurity where I mean to kind of bring it back to to the cosmetic procedures and maybe we can talk about like would we ever consider getting them or not but to kind of tie it back it's like all of these things especially for men are meant to create like an inferiority complex I feel like versus like an insecurity in the same way. Maybe you can disagree, but a lot of women's ads are change yourself. You'll feel better and look better. And I do feel like a lot of men's things get at something deeper. Not that women's don't, but like that they get at something deeper of like your manhood well, yes. is at risk. If you don't take these pills, if you don't get that Botox, if you don't get shredded, if you don't eat six eggs every morning, like I feel like men's, stuff is targeted at like a more vulnerable part exactly. whereas women's is it is more of literally a cosmetic thing of you could be prettier you could be younger you could be more youthful well first of all there's nothing wrong with eating six eggs in the morning because eggs are delicious well um but i would i, I will say you're exactly right i think i think it does get at right when you like if we just go with the whole idea of what are consider considered to be gender norms right like for a typical man who marketers are going to target by by targeting an inferiority or like a weakness in men i think that is the way that you try and resonate right yeah and it, and it is going after the same thing in this right? comparison of like you versus other men well but like the idea that like if you do xyz like you'll get like you know you'll be much buffer you'll have right. a lot more energy and like it's always hinted like in the bedroom like the big ones now are like those those testosterone pills right like there's a couple of baseball players you get all these old sports stars where they're like well now i take these things and like like now i can lift I'm a whole bunch more weights i'm still slinging cock yeah uh, yeah i i guess so i guess that that's the next <laughs> i guess that's the next that's ad. the term that the youths are using these the, days yeah that's the youths um hey frank <laughs> thomas i hear you're still slinging cock um that was a good ad. That was first. That was, <laughs> he was he was a baseball player, um, maybe not the best nickname with the big hurt, um, but well, I think <laughs> if he's slinging cock, exactly, he's too, <laughs> he's too dangerous. But I'm, I'm trying to anyway. reel it back. I'm trying to reel it back to what you were saying. Yeah, I think yes, you target the vulnerability. Yes, you target this this. This character, this character of almost the like old ads mm -hmm. in like magazines, right? Like, I'll kick sand in your face, nerd. Like, sure. you should join the Joe Atlas program. Like, eat spinach. Eat spinach, but like lift these these like literally cartoonish weights. Like one is like a triangular kettlebell, and then one's right. like the circus dumbbell. Like lift weights and like eat raw eggs and you'll be big as a house. Like you'll be roughly the size of a barge right. like Gaston says, and you'll be more appealing to women. Right. If we're, if we're sticking to the, if that's what you're, if that's what you're looking for and that's what you're aiming for. And you're probably targeting, you know, cisgendered men with ESPN ads, you know, for the majority. And so I think you start there. Yeah. You start targeting them with these types of ads and then it starts to open the idea and the door to, do you want to consider doing these things to yourself or for yourself to make yourself feel better? Right. So like what you're, what you're saying is like, would you consider these types of things? Yeah. I consider myself to be obviously like much more open. I spend a lot of time with you and your mother. Like I will blow dry your mother's hair. Mm -hmm. I paint your mother's nails. Like yeah. I tend to lean more, more effeminate in the way that I can accomplish things. I braided your hair when you were little. Mm hmm. Um, and now for me, as I get older, there are definitely things that I do. Your mother makes a joke that like I have more skincare products than she does. Yeah. You did come home that one time with like nine steps and I use like one pump of your cream and you were like, don't do that. That's not for you. Those are my products. Well, what happened was, um, I went and, um, your mother actually won me a gift certificate for a facial. I went and got a facial. Adorable. I thought it was lovely. It is. I happened to be there. I made a connection with the esthetician and... 
we were talking. She had just moved from Minnesota. She moved to Austin. We were talking about Austin, the positives, the negatives. And then she happened to say like, oh, well, we're switching products here. So she gave me the equivalent of about $600 worth of Aveda products. Which is pretty sick. Which is badass. She was like, I have all this stuff. A lot of these are samples or unused pieces. But then it was like, I really liked the way my skin felt. So like, it would be like, this was part of my now routine, which yeah. was I'm going to wash my face. I'm going to use my exfoliant, my liquid exfoliant, and I'm going to use my cleanser. And then I'm going to use my, my toner. And then every once in a while I'll use a hydrating mask or sometimes I'll use like just a regular exfoliating mask. Like I have all of these things and I think I get, you know, I would get teased by, people if they saw the extent of what I have for facial products but I also get told I look very young for my age sure which is the point of all of these things so if Joe Jonas at 33 says hey get a little Zeomin god we're giving them free advertisement hey Joe Um, Jonas (laughs) hey Joe Jonas you know where to find us hey Zeomin do you want a 43 year old man to to smooth out some lines because that's interesting I've got some I've got some deep wrinkles on my forehead that could that could potentially use some treatment. So would you let's let's wrap it up here. Would you consider any cosmetic procedures? I think the way you pointed it out before, which is the kind of maintenance pieces of it, would I consider those where they're not like severe? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's I think it's part of a self-care. I think it's part of the kind of thing that makes you if it makes you feel better, mm-hmm. then why why wouldn't you do those things to to make yourself feel a little bit better? What 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 about what about you? You're you're 24. There are people online at your age getting filler and lip injections and all those things. Like what are your thoughts on it? Oh yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to get it. I I already know. But the thing is that like I uh, want to just look like, yeah, I want to look like youthful and young and I want to age well. I mean, I will cause I'll never have kids. So I'll never get any of the like parenting stress lines that some people do. Um, and you missed your window anyway, you would have had to have kids like six years ago. Oh, I know exactly to look young and youthful in my forties. Um, with kids that is, um, no, uh, jokes aside. Yeah, I would. Um, first of all, I'm a part of the generation that has tech neck where I have these lines on my neck from like (laughs) angling down and lots of other people have them, but mine are aggravated. I've Googled it. There are procedures you can get to lessen them. And I will, I agree. I put sunscreen on my neck every day. I follow um, all these like Korean skincare things. Um, And then, yeah, I, the thing is, do you have have, like a fancy Korean neck pillow now? I don't, but I have been thinking about getting one of those ones where my head is like in the little scoop because I sleep on my side so much. I've been forcing myself to sleep on my back because I watched this girl's TikTok about how her esthetician knew she slept on her right side because she's losing all the elasticity on her right side. And I'm absolutely the same way because I'm a side sleeper. So I switch. I'll allow myself to sleep on my side, but never the same side twice in a row. Mm. I go side, back, side, depending on where I sleep. And then if I'm like reading on my bed or anything, I sleep on my stomach. Anyway, become very neurotic about it, obviously. Um, All that to say, yes, absolutely. I don't think there'd be any shame. I don't know if I'd ever get like anything more major like done to my face, but Botox and maintaining. I'm also a very expressive person. So like I already have like some very, very fine lines like in my forehead and stuff that I'm sure will get worse with time. But I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but I'd like to look youthful for a while however i will say this as a sort of closing point when i start going gray i'm going gray baby i can't wait to be like a silver witch uh, out on the town um so when i go gray i'll go gray but um yeah those are my thoughts no i think this was fun i think this was kind of a cute little fun a little bonus episode audio only sorry we didn't record any any video i'm not sorry i think it's very uh i think it's very fitting Apropos. You shouldn't be able to look at us and judge us while we discuss whether or not we'd get work done. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, Take that. thanks for thanks for following along with us on this uh, quick little 20 minute episode. Um, tell the folks where they can find us. Uh, you can find us at father daughter exp on Instagram and TikTok and father daughter experience on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcasts, except not Apple. That's coming soon. Unless it is already. Who knows? All right, that's us. Uh, That's our time, if you will. Bye. Bye.